It's the magic of the musicals on Broadway and what an amazing song from an incredible musical. It's called Good Morning Baltimore and we're here with the star of Hairspray, Kathy Bryer. So nice to talk to you. Hi, nice to meet you. How are you? I'm doing good, doing good. Now we're here on 52nd Street for a, a musical that is really incredible on at the Neil Simon Theatre. And I have to say, of all the shows I've seen in my career around the world, this is the most fun. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. It is fun. I have a great time doing it. We all do. You're new to the role, relatively. Um, you've only been in it a couple of months, mm -hmm. and you just look so perfect, as if you were born <laughs> to do this role. It must be a great compliment to you that you're the one that's been picked for the number one musical on Broadway. Yeah, it, it really was a compliment to take over for Marissa Jarrett Wanaka, who uh, you know originated the role. She won the Tony for it. It's amazing. It's mind-boggling. I try not to think about it because it gets me scared <laughs> when I think about it. I'm totally in awe of you because you're so rounded as a performer. You're Thank great you. at the comedy. You have an incredible voice, which you don't hear that often. And you can dance as well. You must have been born like this. You couldn't have been trained, surely. <laughs> well, when I was a little girl, when I was a baby, the first year of my life, I screamed. And my grandmother turned to my mother and said, she's going to be a singer. And my mother was like, oh, cut it out. And you know what? It kind of, I kind of was. From the minute I could walk, I started dancing. From the minute I could open my mouth, I sang. Um, and I started out as a dancer. That's why I did for, trained as a dancer for 13 years. I've trained as a singer for 16. I've trained as an actor for nine. And one thing just led to the other. The dancing led to the singing. The singing led to the acting. And um, it's just something I've always wanted to do and I had to do. I had to do it. There was nothing else to do. What about the comedy? Were you born funny? I don't know. You know, my family, we're a bunch of hams, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not the funniest one out of my entire family. My brother, my brother Adam, is probably the funniest person in my family. But, you know, when I was doing summer stock, I was maybe 19. And I was still in, right out of high school. And I did this play called... I ought, um, I ought to be in pictures by Neil Simon. And I played Libby Tucker, who was the lead, and I was trained classically. So I approached, I had no idea, I was so young that I had no idea that Neil Simon was a comedy. And I approached it like it was this most serious thing <laughs> since sliced bread. And so when the first, this was my biggest lesson in comedy ever, the first night we went on, I got laughs after every single thing that came out of my mouth and I was just it was the weirdest experience to go through because you're just like oh my god that's that's where my sense of comedy comes from my sense of comedy comes from being absolutely deadpan serious and so I don't think of myself as a funny person like I'm not the person at the parties who's making everybody laugh but I definitely think you have to be born with a certain kind of comedic timing I don't, I don't think it's something you can learn. I definitely think it's something that you have to be born with. But I'll tell you, working with Harvey, there's no one better at comedic timing. So as long as you just breathe and connect with him, you're fine. It's a cake. It's a piece of cake. Well, let's start at the beginning. Let's talk about the story. What is it about, firstly? Well, I think it's really about... Um, it's about many different things. I think it's about going after your dreams, no matter what, no matter who tells you, no matter whether it, whether somebody tells you not to or that you can't do it, which I definitely relate to. I stopped dancing as a teenager because I was told I was too fat to ever be a dancer. I think it's about um, accepting people for who they are. I think it's about going after your dreams. There's so many different things that the show can be about. But basically, it's a 16-year-old girl who wants to be a dancer, but she doesn't look like any of the people on any of the teenagers on the Corny Collins show which is this big uh, dance show after school which is kind of like a sock hop on television every night kind of like Dick Clark and uh, she falls in love with the show and she wants to be a dancer and her mother tells her she can't and she winds up going auditioning and getting on the show and she befriends this black kid in detention because she's a little bit of a rebel. She always she gets in trouble, even though she doesn't mean to. She winds up getting in trouble and being thrown into detention. And there's a young kid named Seaweed who is a young black man who dances on the show on Negro Day. They only do Negro Day once a month. And so what happens is she doesn't understand. She doesn't get it because as far as she concern, as she, she's concerned is that Seaweed is her friend. She doesn't understand why they have to be segregated. And so she gets this, you know, off the top 
top of her head, she's like, oh, well, let's segregate it. Let's, you know, you're going to, we're going to crash Mother Daughter Day, which is a special show. And one thing just, you know, piles on top of the other and it kind of spins out of control and out of what she thought it would turn into. She never thought that they, she'd be, you know, I don't want to give it away, but she just, she winds up in jail and she just never thought things would happen the way they turned out because she wasn't, she's not an activist. The great thing about this show is that we have all these levels to it of the serious side of the race issue and the and the age issue beneath that and then the fat issue beneath yeah. that but it's still hysterically funny and when I said <laughs> that this is the most fun I've ever seen it really is I sat there watching it and I've seen it three or four times now it is incredible how funny this show is and how much fun and you never ever want to look at your watch ever and that's such an <laughs> achievement for the people that have put this show together it's incredible they've crafted it uh, just it's amazing if you take if you really take the piece apart and look at it you know it's funny because technically this show is a walk through the park for me because I am so well trained I was having a discussion with the assistant director about I'm finding it hard to do because I don't have to push because it's so well crafted and it makes my job ten times easier I really mo the notes I get most of the time are pull back pull back because it's so well crafted and the reason why it's so funny but yet so poignant is because it's so well written the music is just as well written as the script and it all blends together and the dancing supports that you know we're all even when we're dancing the dances are talking about what was going on in history at, in that time or what's going on between the characters it's so specific and I think what makes it funny is the, those characters in those situations. That's where the comedy comes out of, and that's where you want the comedy to come out of. The thing that's interesting about this role, though, it's not a typical starry Broadway uh, lead in terms of no. the look of the character. You have to be very short yes. and not overweight, but plump yeah, in, in a really attractive way, though. Right. It's so <laughs> clever, isn't it? It is. It really, you know what? That's Not many people pick up on that. That's very interesting that you pick up on that. You do. You need to be chubby, but you have to be zoftic. You know, you have to be, it has to be in all the right places what's interesting about the, the character is it's her spirit that that shines through and that's what you really need to look at but it's interesting because they're very picky on how they cast because they want chubby girls but they want them to be be curvy because you know it's a 16 year old boy and the 16 year old boy still needs to find something that he likes you know what i'm saying i mean that's part of it that's part of it so um the only question in my mind because every time i i had auditioned i was the shortest thinnest girl in the room and so i thought oh i'm way too thin for this they're never going to cast me and i think that's why i got it because i never thought i would <laughs> because i went in i knew i could do it i knew i had the chops to do it i just didn't think i was physically the right type for it and i know how broadway that's such a a big part of how people get cast is their look not necessarily their talent but also the way that you must act in that audition presumably is what gives the lasting impression with the directors and the casters. I had, a, I had a really, it was, you know, I worked my, can I say butt? I worked my butt off <laughs> <laughs> to, um, to get this part. When I first went in, you know, I am a, a girl from Staten Island. I grew up in New York City. I'm very, I was very much a tomboy. I'm tough. I was tough. And so she's a young, naive 16 year old girl. I really had to work. I, at 16, I was never that. <laughs> I was never her. I, was ne I wasn't even close to how she was when she was 16. They really worked with me because I think they saw that I had what it took. I just didn't get it right away. And I, w I auditioned eight times. And each time I went in, I showed them just enough to get me back to the next round. But I worked. I worked a lot. I did a lot of research um, into the time period. I did a lot of research into, you know, what were they listening to? How did they dress? It, all that kind of stuff to help inform me about a mindset of a 16-year-old at that time. I went to see a show last night, Gypsy, that we were yes. talking to on this program. And one thing that I noticed, a lot of the characters are only on stage for a couple of minutes in total, <laughs> really you're on virtually for the whole two and a half hours yeah. and the dancing is incredible and it's very very deliberately physical yes. how do you cope with that especially on a two show day um rest and my physical exercises i have a regimen that i come in and i do every single day i it's i have a 40 you know 45 minute physical regimen that i do before i even do the show and you need a lot of rest and you constantly have to take care of yourself you have to watch the way you eat my dresser k is always yelling at me <laughs> to eat correctly because you need to sustain your energy um 
you just do it. It kind of becomes easier the more you do it, the more easier it becomes. You know, it's like you you train. It's like training to be an athlete. People ask me why I love doing this show, and this is the second year I've come to Broadway and I've been doing interviews in the West End for many, many years. And the reason I love it is I find it so inspiring to see people like you that are just normal people that come across that it's so easy to you, yet what you do is so incredible. You do know that, don't you? That, that what you do is extraordinary. It's it's easy, but it's also, it, there's it's not easy, easy. It's, it, is, it is hard to do. I think it's just natural is what I mean by it's easy, it's natural. You know, most people, on Broadway didn't get here by not training and thank you for your compliments I do appreciate it I, I tend to look at that as um, a gift I can't take credit for it I mean I trained I've taken singing lessons for 16 years but it's a gift that I was given and that's kind of how I look at everything that I do I have to do it because I was given the gift and if I don't then I'm wasting a gift that whoever gave it to me I don't know who did but whoever is up there and gave it to me I have to use it what kind of a thrill is it for you to go out there night in, night out, when you hear the roar of the thousands of people that are watching you every night? It's cool. It's really cool. But, you know, it's also like you can't pay attention to it because the minute you pay attention to it, then I think there's something wrong. You have to, you know, it's about sharing your gift and giving them giving them a present every night. And they do give you a present back by their response. But I think when, especially when you're, if you're doing something and it doesn't get the response that you think it should, that's when you're in trouble. You know, so you constantly have to kind of keep yourself in check. This is an incredible show, as I've said several times. Hairspray is the musical. It's on at the Neil Simon Theatre on 52nd Street here on Broadway. Kathy Breyer is the amazing star who plays Tracy. And this is a show that if you can get a ticket, it is definitely one to see. Uh, because, as I say, I've seen nothing else like it around the world. Thank you so much for sparing the time today, Kathy. And uh, good luck you. with the show and good luck with your career because there's a great career in front of you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.